BCPS students and stargazers, welcome back to this to the Kent Observatory. I'm Captain Tim from the BCPS Starlab Portable Planetarium. In our previous Junior Astronomer episodes, I took you on a telescopic tour of the Moon and deep space objects. Tonight, I would like to to explore stars and star clusters with my giant electronic telescope. Then I will show you a cool way that I use to explore faraway stars up close and personal through a method called spectro spectroscopy. But first, let's take that tour of stars I just promised you. Usually, we think of light as what we can see with our eyes. But believe it or not, the visible light we see is only a small part of light. There are forms of light we cannot see, such as gamma rays, x-rays, and infrared rays of light. All of these forms of light make up what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's learn a little bit more about the electromagnetic spectrum and all of these forms of what we call light. 
For hundreds of years, astronomers saw only that part of the universe visible to our eyes. But visible light is a mere sliver of the broad range of light energy that the universe sends our way. Electromagnetic energy exists on a spectrum, varying according to the length of its waves. The shortest waves are called gamma rays. The longest are radio waves. Our eyes can only see the waves in the very middle of the spectrum, visible light. Since we are missing so much of the spectrum, we rely on scientific instruments to reveal the universe. Just beyond our range of vision, on the short end of the spectrum, extreme ultraviolet light is absorbed by the ozone layer of our atmosphere. A satellite called the International Ultraviolet Explorer was the first craft to gather the rays in space and to see, for instance, the streams of gas between small clusters of stars. Longer than visible light waves, infrared radiation may be absorbed by water and carbon dioxide and is best studied from mountains like Mauna Kea in Hawaii, where the air is relatively dry, or from space telescopes like Hubble. Our eyes see the Orion Nebula as a group of stars obscured by dust and gas. Hubble's infrared image reveals young stars in full bloom. If we could see radio waves, the longest waves of all, we would see a sky full of galaxies instead of stars. But we need electronic equipment to pick them up. Most radio waves do penetrate the atmosphere, so we can gather them up with ground-based dishes. A radio wave image of the galaxy Cygnus A shows red clouds of gas invisible to optical telescopes. A remarkable NASA satellite called COBE is even helping us see the universe close to the beginning of time. Measuring infrared and microwave radiation, COBE picks up remnant heat from the Big Bang called cosmic microwave background radiation. While we're seeing stars, Kobe envisions a time before stars and galaxies even existed. Gathering the full range of electromagnetic energy gives us a richer view of the universe. Of course, when we are looking at stars through a telescope, we are using our eyes to see the visible form of light. You may or may not know this, but the white light we see from stars is really all of the colors of the visible spectrum mixed together. If we break down white light through a special lens called a prism, we can see the spectrum color pattern of that white light. If you have ever seen a rainbow right after a thunderstorm, think about why you see it. You are really seeing the spectrum produced by the sun's light as it shines through the raindrops, nature's prism. When it comes to stars, they are so very far away that we cannot measure them in miles. That would be way too difficult. Instead, we measure star distances in what we call light years. Light is a measure of distance, not time. It is the distance in space that light travels in one year. So, one light year equals six trillion miles. Wow! So if a star is 10 light years away, we would multiply six trillion miles times 10 to equal 60 trillion miles. That's a lot of miles. Space is really huge. Because space is so big, our eyes, even through a telescope, have difficulty observing their characteristics. This is where breaking down the star's light into its spectrum color pattern helps an astronomer. Let me show you how this works with my telescope. The study of a star's spectrum color pattern of light is called spectroscopy. 
Sometimes when I'm out here at the Kent Observatory, I get the urge as an astronomer to explore stars more than just taking astrophotos of, the, of them. For instance, let's say I wish to explore the famous star Betelgeuse with my telescope tonight. Betelgeuse is a star located in the constellation Orion the Hunter. Can you find Orion the Hunter's belt? Three stars in a row in this photo I just took from the Kent Observatory. I have just given the com command to my electronic telescope to find Betelgeuse in the night sky. Now that I have found the star and focused on it, I'm going to t insert, take, I took the eyepiece out and I'm going to insert this special spectroscopic lens. Here it is, which I'm going to hook up to the camera to break down the color pattern of light for the star Betelgeuse. Let me screw it in, place the eyepiece with my camera. There we go. It up now once in place now that I've hooked up the camera I can take a photo of Betelgeuse and it will look like this check out the spectrum color pattern of light for the star Betelgeuse Let's explore what a star spectrum tells us about a star. I've got a cool software program for my computer which will give me valuable information about a star just from the star spectral color pattern. Here's how it works for the famous star Betelgeuse, which is located in the constellation Orion the Hunter. 943 light years away. Pictured here is the photo of Betelgeuse I took through my telescope using my special spectroscopic lens. Notice the spectrum color pattern. That is cool, but what if I want to know more about Betelgeuse other than its basic color pattern? Well, if I load this photo into my spectroscopic software on my computer, the color pattern here is automatically changed into a colorful, most more useful graph of color data. Here it is. Notice that this graph breaks down the spectral color pattern in more detail. Especially look at the color bands inside and near the graphs, the star graphs peak. Can, can you tell which color of light is emitted the most from Betelgeuse? If you guessed red and orange, you would be right. Notice how the red, notice how the red and orange bands of the spectrum are emphasized for Betelgeuse. From this data, we can con conclude that beta Betelgeuse is a type M red supergiant star. Watch. It's a red supergiant star. It is estimated to be 950 times the size of our sun. What is even cooler is that this graph can be analyzed to find
the chemical elements that are being emitted by the light of the star. Let's zoom in closely. Let's zoom in closely on Betelgeuse's graph. Watch. We'll zoom in closer here. Watch. Everywhere you see, I can make it even bigger. Watch. Everywhere you see a sharp, jagged crook, like right here, or a dip. There's one there. There's one right there in the graph. On the star's peak graph, a chemical element is being burned or emitted from that star. To tell which element is being burned at each crook or dip in the graph, I simply have to match up the angstrom number for the dip with the burning wavelength of known chemical elements. For Betelgeuse, I was... It, I was able to detect the elements carbon, right here, sodium, right here, and argon, all by initially just taking a spectroscopic photo of Betelgeuse through my telescope. As an astronomer, think about it. It is pretty cool to be able to tell what elements are burning on a star that is 943 light years away in space. Now let's take a look at another star project I explored recently through my spectroscopic lens and telescope. This star is called Regulus and it's located in the constellation Leo the Lion, 78 light years away in space. Here is the, you can hardly see it, it's a little dimmer than Betelgeuse, but here is the co spectral color pattern view of Regulus I, I photographed through the telescope. There it is. And here is the color graph of Regulus when the telescope's view was loaded into my computer software. Look at the colors within the peak of the graph. Can you determine what, what color star Regulus is from what you see? If you think Regulus is a blue star, you interpreted the graph correctly. Regulus is classified as a type B blue-white star. Here, here it is. Blue stars are the hottest stars in the universe, and they burn at about 44,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yikes, that's toasty. Blue stars also produce large amounts of hydrogen gas. Let's zoom in for a closer look at my graph of Regulus. Let's zoom in so you can see it closer. Sure enough, I was able to locate, you see this crook, this dip and crook right here on the gray, on the peak? I was sure, I was able to locate the dip or crook in the peak that shows where hydrogen gas is being produced in the star. Success. As you can see, by studying the spectrum color patterns of stars through a telescope, and special spec, uh, spectroscopic lens, astronomers can discover a great deal of information about those points of light we see in the sky called stars. As you have seen, stargazing with a backyard telescope or a pair of binoculars can be a lot of fun. And as you've seen from the Kent Observatory, there are many ways to explore space from right here at home. Captain Kerry Curtis, my Starlab partner, 
And I would like to encourage you and your family before the end of the school year to take advantage of the next clear starlit sky and become a BCPS junior astronomer. It's a great family project and you could earn awards from Captain Kerry or me, Captain Tim, for the drawings of the night sky that you make. If you like art, becoming a junior astronomer is definitely right for you. It's not hard, doesn't take a lot of time, and you don't need fancy equipment like I have here at the Kent Observatory. Let me show you what you can, you can do to proudly become a BCPS junior astronomer. First of all, print out a copy of the BCPS Junior Astronomer Awards Program booklet. Here it is. Here is an easy way to get this booklet. From your computer at home, send an email to me, Captain Tim, or Captain Kerry Curtis, my Star Lab partner, directly and ask for the Junior Astronomer booklet. We will then email it right to you. Once you have the booklet, you can print it out and follow the written directions for the award you are trying to earn. Grab a pencil and write down one of these email addresses for Captain Carey or myself and have it so you can have it for later. Once you have completed one of the junior astronomer tasks, simply take a good photo of it, of the page, and email it directly to me, Captain Tim, or to Captain Carey's email address. Once again, here is our email address, addresses. Grab, grab a pencil quickly and write them down so you have them for later. When Captain Carey or I receive your completed moon, constellation, deep space, or astro art award task, we will email you one of, one of these virtual award badges, which you can print out, frame it if you want, and hang it on your wall. We will also email you a certificate for each award that you completed. Here's, here are the four virtual award badges you can earn. Captain Carey and I would, would love for you to consider becoming a BCPS junior astronomer. You can make it a family project. I know I speak for Captain Carey as well as myself when I say how much we both enjoy seeing your sketches of the night sky, and we really love sending you awards for your hard work. For now, here's hoping you have clear skies for stargazing. Thanks for joining me. This is Captain Tim, signing off.